Greetings, one and all. William Theo here, homegrown and happy to bring you the latest major events here at home and across the planet in the last 24-hour news cycle. And tops in tonight's stories, Civil Service Commission head Honcho Carlo Nograles vows to help qualified or deserving temps, contractuals, casuals or co-terminus employees attain eligibility for full-time positions in government by way of granting them the alternative of a career service eligibility preference rating CSCTR. This declaration by the Civil Service Commish is his agency's commitment and full support for the President's wish to fully and permanently integrate government workers who have been working under contract of service or job order status for the last 10 years or more. Earlier in the week, the President, on the eye of the commemoration of Labor Day yesterday, ordered the extension of the working contracts of temps, casuals, contractuals, etc., and all till next year. Year. Qualified applicants to, uh, to satisfy these conditions at least 10 years of employment in a job order contract of service or status and a work evaluation rating of at least very satisfactory in the last two ratings prior to the application for eligibility. The application for the grant of CSCPR must be filed within six months from the date of release of the results of the career service exams taken. Nograles earlier said the granting of the preference rating is an exceptional privilege extended only to those who have shown their ability to get the job done since the coveted civil service eligibility. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu would not give in to U.S. President Joe Biden's entreaty to strike a deal with Hamas for a truce leaning heavily on the release of Israeli hostages still in Hamas's captivity. Still, Anthony Blinken managed to have Arab's border open grudgingly by Netanyahu's government for relief and delivery into Gaza. VOA senior diplomatic correspondent Cindy Sain has more. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met Wednesday in Tel Aviv with relatives and supporters of Israeli hostages still held by the militant group Hamas, a U.S. designated terrorist group. Blinken is on his seventh trip to the region since the Israel-Hamas war was triggered by a Hamas attack on October 7th. He is in pursuit of a ceasefire deal that would free the hostages and bring about a pause in the war that has left nearly 35,000 Palestinians dead, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. Blinken and Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant visited the Kerem Shalom crossing into Gaza on Wednesday. Blinken said Israel had made important concessions to allow more aid to reach Palestinians and to reach a ceasefire deal. He said the world is waiting for Hamas to take the deal that is on the table. Hamas has to decide uh, whether it will take this deal um, and actually advance uh, the uh, situation for the people that it purports to care about uh, in Gaza. Uh, there is no time for delay. But after a packed trip to Israel, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia, Blinken left for home without any news of a ceasefire agreement. Observers had also been watching for a broader deal that would have involved normalizing ties between Israel and Saudi Arabia, possibly in exchange for a deal that would have ended the war in Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he is not willing to end the war to get a hostage deal. And he said a planned military offensive into the Gaza city of Rafah, where at least one million Palestinians have fled, would happen whether there is a ceasefire or not. One analyst told VOA Blinken has not been able to achieve a breakthrough. But I think the real holdup here is the fact that you've got an Israeli government led by Prime Minister Netanyahu that includes voices that strongly oppose a Palestinian state. And the Saudis have made very clear that they want to see a ceasefire in this war in Gaza as soon as possible. And they also want to see uh, a commitment towards uh, building a state of Palestine. Katula said he was in Saudi Arabia last week and that there has been a lot of progress on a defense pact 
or other bilateral agreements between Washington and Riyadh, but not on a broader agreement with Israel. Cindy Sain, VOA News. Despite last night's recapture of Hamilton Hall and clearing out of encamped protesters on campus, school officials have swayed cops to maintain a visible presence on campus till May 17 or two days after commencement exercises. With last night's successful police operations, does it signify the end of mass student resistance in the epicenter of school protests in America? VOA's Tina Trin provides some answers in this report. The scene is startling at Columbia University, a completely empty lawn with no signs of students or their pro-Palestinian encampment, a space where dozens of tents recently stood, entirely cleared out. Overnight Wednesday, hundreds of New York City police officers moved in at the request of University President Manu Shafiq to remove and arrest protesters after a group took over an occupied Hamilton Hall, an academic building on campus. In a statement, Shafiq said, this turn of events has filled me with deep sadness. I'm sorry we reached this point. In total, 109 protesters were arrested and faced charges including trespassing, criminal mischief and burglary. An additional 173 student protesters were arrested the same night at nearby City College. At Columbia, student reactions are mixed. It disappoints me to see like the police like arresting my fellow students. It's they're just protesting. They're just like speaking for what they believe in. In a press briefing, New York City Mayor Eric Adams said events had progressed beyond peaceful protest. There's nothing peaceful about barricading building, destroying property, or dismant dismantling security cameras. We cannot allow what should be a lawful <clears throat> protest to turn into a violent spectacle that saves and serves no purpose. But witnesses say the police response was disproportionate to the offense and just as violent, with at least one student seen lying unconscious on the ground during the police raid. I'm ashamed and horrified at what the university has chosen to do to its students and the actions that it has taken. It's traumatizing for the entire campus. Others support the decision to bring in police and wonder whether more could have been done after initial student arrests were made at the encampment last week. I think um, a big mistake with the first arrests, um, you know, with encampment number one, was that they uh, made, like, absolutely, like, seems to be like zero effort to stop another encampment from being erected. You know, maybe if they had, if they had used adequate police force to stop a second encampment from being built, then we wouldn't even be here today. Jewish students like Ben Solomon say recent events are distressing. It's a very hostile environment for all Jewish students. I haven't. I've personally been physically harassed, but I've spoken with Jewish friends of mine who have been spat on, who have been uh, physically forced to flee, uh, students who are considering transferring out. Shafiq has asked police to remain on campus until May 17th, two days after commencement ceremonies are scheduled to take place. Whether that move will restore calm or spark more unrest remains to be seen. Tina Trin, VOA News, New York. At this moment, let's turn to my colleague in TTV's Pine City Studios for the latest developments brewing in the Cordilleras. Ala? Name Bag Arabi Pilipinas. Upat a drug personality si Natilio, ka nasa 103 million pesos mo at di illegal a droga. Di na kung biskar iti may sangal daw nga anti-illegal drug operation to polisya iti Cordillera. Natiliw ti doang a drug personality ini naisayangkat a bypass operation ijay batag latin dat benget. Nakumpiskar kadakwada ti talupulok at may isang elongated dried marijuana leaves with stocks. Ngagdagsan iti 31 kilograms, ngagatat iti nasa 3 million pesos. Ijay kaninga, natiliw ti doang may a drug personalities. Nakumpiskar kadakwada ti walo a marijuana bricks, ngagdagsan iti 8,000 grams, ngagatat iti 960,000 pesos. Talo a pedaso ti dried marijuana leaves, ngagdagsan iti 3,000 grams, ngagatat iti 360,000 pesos. Dua a woman Sucks, ang naglaon iti dried marijuana ngagdagsan iti 18,300 ngagatat iti nasok 2 million pesos. 
Ken dua ang botelya ang naglaon iti mapapati ang marijuana oil nga gatad iti 12,000 pesos ken maysa nga air rifle. Sumangsango na kiti sospek iti kaso panaglabsing iti Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. Kabiyata na, nagsisinamot ang marijuana eradication, tinisengkat iti Benguet kan Kalinga. Iti pakabuklan, nadadaal din nasuk 230,000 apidaso ti fully grown marijuana plants, kan nasuk 40,000 a dried marijuana stocks, nagatad iti 106 million pesos. Awan mo tinatiliw a cultivator, kabayatan ti operasyon. Iti sa Bali, Adamag, Tarigagay ni First Lady Lisa Araneta Marcos, Iti mga ilukat iti Presidential Museum, iti Mansion House, a replica, iti Yus Museum, iti Malacanang. Sigun kan kuana, day-day won, nag iti estudyante kan agtutubo iti Tiyos Mansion, iso at tuladon na ba't dito isyunad. May parang iti museum nag iti barong, nga inramat nag iti nagserbe a presidente iti Pilipinas, kan da dumapay ang memorabilia. Libre day to'y ang may jaya ka nag iti turista kan residente. Babaan iti resolusyon, subsuportaran nag iti membro di City Council, ti panggap ti First Lady. Nakalanad iti resolusyon at dakkal at tulong ti museum dat nung may pangato ti historical awareness ti publiko. Mabigbigbig di Baguio City kas Creative City for Crafts and Folk Arts can Education Center of the North. Dagita, dagiti damdamag, manipo dito'y PTV Cordillera. Siya ni Ala Sunduan na Imbag Arabi. Thank you, Ala, and we have come to the end of tonight's show. We look forward to you joining us here tomorrow, same time, same location on your remote and or browser. Always keep in mind to work hard, dream big, give thanks, and stay connected while you catch the news right here. William Theo wishing you all a restful night ahead.